Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to the session here. My name is Rodrigo. Welcome. And today we're going to be here with Nick Shaheen, lead trader from the Benzinga Options Inner Circle chat room. A lot of you guys already know him from there. He's been with Benzinga for a while. And today we will be going over trade ideas, education, options education, um, a lot of questions from the chat as well. We're going to be going over tickers on the chat as well. And I believe that we do have Nick Shaheen here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and bring on Mr. Nick Shaheen, lead trader at the Options Inner Circle chat room. All right, I believe he's there in the session. What's going on, Nick? A little bit under the weather, so my ho- my voice is going to sound hoarse a little bit. So um, uh, hopefully we can maintain the level high enough to where we're um, projecting well. Right, right. Um, and how was the session today? I believe that you just got out of the session. For- uh, pretty busy. We did. Uh, I broke it into three videos. It was uh, well over two two hours long, 
and this is the list that came out of it. Uh, so I sent out a note after coming back from vacation that we will do the Sunday session, and uh, we got 147, 148 requests. So I went through them. This is the list right here. And um, I tabulated them last night. I put them in a nice table like this. And actually, I'll show you when I share my screen. And I sent out the videos uh, to those who could not make it. We had about 80 people, I think, live in the room. And of course, it's Sunday morning. Not everybody wants to spend time there. You know, they spend all day, every day with me live anyway during the week in the live room. Uh, so last thing they want is spend another Sunday with me. <clears throat> right. And just we, we have to. <laughs> all right. So Eric Scott, good afternoon, everybody here to learn and hear new ways to make money doing options. Eric, we're going to get into all that, man. Um, let's see. Thought by nature. I only have one K. Hopefully we can set up a trade for the rest. I'll pay for the next Tuesday. Um, Hazel. All right. So we do have everybody here pumped up and ready. Nick, uh, I know that uh, just for everybody to be aware, Nick does this Monday to Friday, nine to five. He's in the chat room, nonstop sharing his screen webinar style, basically. Right. And Sunday uh, yep. Sundays as well. So it's pretty much live trading. But a lot of people also get in there because of, you know, technicals and education. Right, Nick? Definitely. I spoke to somebody who was in the class from the extensive course that you helped set up. He has 30 years experience. And he joined. Uh, he's been trading options for a long, long time, and he still saw benefit to join. And um, his goal was to get, and I'm going to quote him, as intuitive as I am with charts. Uh, the reason why I highlight that is because I developed this through my own uh, uh, efforts, not through Wall Street classes or anything. So uh, to, it's it's going to be, it, it is a, a fresh way of looking at things because I did it on my own. I'm an engineer by schooling, uh, I was in business and then I've been investing the whole time. And then I found out a few things and it was a few aha moments later. I was like, wait a minute, I don't need to do anything else. I quit everything else. And I've been doing this long, uh, strictly for, for the longest time. I've been helping with Benzinga since 2011. So since 2011, we've had a, a course of sorts and it has evolved into what we have now, which is a whew, a library of things and uh, we were first in cracking into a whole bunch of stuff like first credit spread at uh, in the benzinga family under a different banner and then uh, added the chat room why because the chat room is available to everybody regardless of what your, your time frame if you have a busy life kids work you cannot be there um, during the the, the business hour so what you do is you log in whenever you have questions you receive my emails a couple of times a day uh, a couple of times on the weekend um, videos and then you come up with questions and then you reach out through the chat room so it's kind of like microsoft teams or slack or discord minus the noise it's on your pace so i'm making myself available to you 24 7 and we can chat with it um, and then and the idea is to add uh, value somehow and most recently, I added, I think late last year, I can't remember exactly when, but it re feels recently, but it's been, we've been at it for months, a live room. So the live room I designed for fast trading, <clears throat> but it has uh, turned into a hangout for all traders who have the ability to spend some time with me. And we've had 300 people in the room every day, all day, no joke. So that's my commitment to you that I'll be there every day, all day. I don't think you'll find that kind of commitment from anybody else that's worth their weight. And uh, trust me, I try to trade and I can't, I put some of my trading aside because I will make mistakes if I trade fast. And, uh, but I make available, uh, myself available to trading fast. So I'm tracking the market with spreadsheets open every day, uh, several runs a day for fast traders. But what if you're not a fast trader? You can still hang out and learn a crap ton of things and find swing trade opportunities and discuss swing trade opportunities like this. I will have my mic on. I will have my screen shared, as you will see in a minute. And people are in there. I have so many testimonials. Uh, some of them are heartwarming to see somebody change their life. Um, one person in particular, his name is uh, Persia, and her username is Persia. I'm pretty sure his real name is Persia, too. But anyway, so he's... You know, he shares his uh, trades and they expire every day and he's making bank every day. So I asked him, have you quit your job yet? He goes, no, no, not yet, but pretty close getting there. 
So I don't want people to quit their jobs, but that's the kind of work we're doing. Like uh, active traders, slower traders, swing traders, and people who just want to learn a little bit more about charts. The, the knowledge I share about charts, and it's intuitive knowledge, it's not rules based. And I don't, you don't need a ruler to follow my charts. You just need eyeballs, some common sense, and a few uh, tools that are available to us. So I think it's a lot of fun. I think you will love it if you join it. Right, the chat members are there calling you as well. So Nick, as you can see, Nick is pretty busy. But That's the uh, boss. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but yeah, guys, I mean, this is pretty much, I know that you're looking at, you know, there's live trading and all that stuff for people that either, look, you could either have a full-time job or, or just full-time or part-time trading. There are trades for every single type of person and Nick will pretty much help you out with, with that as well. But uh, more importantly, there's a lot of education, Nick. Uh, we really cannot not talk about it, right? So It is uh, all about education. My message is don't join me and say, where are the trades? Join and say, where can I learn the next thing? When is your next one-on-one? Uh, -on -one? When is your next uh, teaching session? Because it's what I want to do is, sure, I, I do share my setups. And I share a lot of trades during the day for, for those who can make it. And those who can't, they'll get the trades uh, trade write-ups. Uh, but I think I can help you find uh, tools you can use for the rest of your life. Methods, logic, uh, rules you shouldn't break, and I have a few I'll share with you. Um, very simple things that professionals, those who are successful at this, never break. And uh, they're intuitive, and they're like, oh, sure, yeah, definitely, yeah. But we don't do them. So knowing them is one thing. Doing them is something else. Last week, I got tested. Uh, personally, I was traveling and I took a position assuming I can trade from the plane because they told me I had Wi Fi. It turns out I couldn't and I lost and I couldn't defend my position. So I fixed it the next day, but it was an SPX position that I shouldn't have taken hopping on a plane. H hindsight, right? So the rules um, are there for a reason it's to keep us away from trouble in spite of ourselves so they're very simple there's nothing crazy uh, you'll see hopefully it's intuitive and i you will get curious and you will just join the group i want to tell you the group is so close-knit um that people help each other and people are posting in there it's not just me nobody talks except me so it's not so noisy because 300 people that's a lot of people we've had 400 people in the room before on Fed Day, and this is Fed Week. Maybe we'll have 400, maybe 500 this time. So uh, what the problem is... It, it, hey, Nick, really quick, you don't want to share your screen there and you can kind of uh, kind of guide yeah. them with the charts and everything, All right? Sure. I was um, giving you space with that. Uh, gosh, that is so small up there. Oh, my goodness. I got to move it. Select screen window, stream yard. Nope, not this one, not this one. What am I on the spy? This one, that's the one. Allow, okay. So you can see my mouse moving. Yep, that's the one. Okay, so <clears throat> the, the goal of the room is to find opportunities as fast as we can and as slow and slower to suit everybody's um, needs. I'm not very fast. On Friday, I was helping people jump in and out of the spy like every 30 seconds. No way I can do this. But they made a ton of money because we tracked it perfectly. I'll show you. I'm going to show you. This is the, the one-minute chart. And <clears throat> there are lines in there. We go down to 15-second charts, believe it or not, to actually trade it successfully. And Friday was very tricky because the day started out. It, it dipped. And I said, I pulled up a spreadsheet. I deleted the, the images I posted. And I tracked it with bars. I have a giant Excel spreadsheet that dumps the data live with as far as volume versus open interest. And I try to calculate where money needs to go. And I said, there's upside pressure to 395. We need to be at 395. If I was a market maker, I need to close at 395. And it was at 393. So I took a long position and I stayed in it. Sure enough, this close made it work like a charm, but it was tough. And we had conviction because we had data and I shared it and it was live. But that's the fast stuff. These are 15 second charts. 
so a very emotional we try to keep it to a minimum uh, but the, the same concepts work <clears throat> at all time frames all you have to do is just um, know your charts if not know what to ask and who to ask also in the room there are some people that there are a lot of people that post their own trades so they're accountable they don't just say i just closed the win and everybody goes yeah no they say i'm shorting this and then they come back and say i'm closing the win uh i think it was ryan on friday he was short um the spy by owning puts and i looked at the data and i said there's upside pressure there's support i don't think you're going to make money but be careful sure enough he made money because they fell into that support and then but they still bounced based on my data so he was right and i was right he made money and i made money so if somebody listened to him they made a lot of money i mean those puts were money uh, by the end of the day they bought the puts they took some heat and then by the end of the day they had made money pretty well uh, a good hefty sum so they share trades they share single trade singular trades on tesla i helped trade uh, tesla on friday but that stock is tricky if you're doing it alone hmm you better be bulletproof if you're trying to it is a an account buster for sure so be careful with it don't uh, trade it willy-nilly i'm just making sure that somebody um is not stuck because they know i have a presentation and they try to reach me i'm just making sure that they're okay and they are okay okay so the the concept is if you join uh, the uh, my group you're going to get all of me all day every day at your own pace 24 7 via the chat room instead of going back and forth with emails uh, you get my emails uh, or posts um, in the chat room I post them I have a special place Nick's important messages and I post it in here Friday I sent the form tell me about your tickers today I posted the videos three of them one two three and the result of that uh, spreadsheet I just shared. And all these are tick uh, are clickables, by the way. So you can find your, and my comments, how long will it take you to type up a list that's this long? That's how much work I do for you and for my members, and that's homework. So I'm gonna share with you, let's start here. This is a presentation I usually do uh, about uh, picking up some professional habits. I'm not gonna bother and go through it, uh, like presentation style, I'm gonna talk you through it. So professional habit, what does that mean? It's people who will succeed at doing this for a living, they have these habits and you should too. Uh, first of all, this is mine, um, defining risk. You know, it's not so, everybody. if I asked everybody here, hey, tell me, throw a class on risk, you'd be like, what do you mean? Everybody knows what risk is. Well, trust me when I tell you that not everybody can formulate how they should be talking about risk. So I like to break it up into two pieces. First of all, do I have a marking pen with StreamYard like Zoom? Maybe I do. Anyway, let's assume I don't. Um, so the idea is to first decide, okay, so how much money? What is the consequence of me being wrong? Right. I want to know if I take this risk, is I'm going to die or just sprain an ankle if things go bad? That's the first piece, right? And this is usually a one, one and done. You make that decision, you discuss it with your uh, family, and you say, okay, I'm, I'm okay to risk $2,000 on every trade. Let's just say that's the number. And uh, then you, that decision is done, you set it aside, and then you decide to take the trade or not. And when you do, you assign yourself, okay, the second part of risk, what are my odds of success? So the, the money at risk is one thing, and I agreed that I'm taking it and I can survive it if it goes to hell. And the second part is I should assign myself a percentage. What are my odds of success? That's my starting point. Luckily with options, that's so easy. I'll show, show you in a little bit. It's a number you can read off of the page. It is. It cannot be easier. In fact, if you don't trade options, you should use your options uh, uh, platform in order to um, better manage your equity trades. For example, if you buy a stock, let's say Apple, and you say, I think it's going to be 180 in October or by October, then you can go to October platform, <coughs> um, options contract and figure out if you're smoking crack or not. You can tell, and we'll go through that one, and, uh, and, and that will be like a wake-up call. Okay, so I think it's going to 180. The market makers 
tell me, no, it's not going to 180. So I'll show you how to figure that one out. And that's just scratching the surface of what options can do for you, even if you don't trade options. Uh, so the first part of risk, how much? Make sure it doesn't break you. How do you know how much is too much? If you're thinking about it at night, if you're nauseous when you think about it, that's way too much. Uh, mathematically, you can figure out, read, there's a whole bunch of people that have, oh, you don't you don't take more than 20% <coughs> of, your, of your portfolio at risk at one time or whatever. Different people have different... Um, risk appetites. So make sure you trade your risk appetite, not someone else's. I'm conservative when it comes to money. I'm super aggressive in real life. I fight for a sport. I like to race cars and motorcycles. And so uh, <clears throat> in when it comes to money, I'm chicken. So don't take my conservative effort to suit your uh, risk tolerance. You might be more aggressive than me, and that's okay. Risk management. So what part do I manage? Not this. This is the part I manage, my odds of success. This is a decision I make and I move on. I don't average down. That's what that means. Do not average down ever. Okay, there's a nuance there, but I'll tell you why in a second. The odds of success in options. I have my own parameters. You should have yours. I'll share mine. You adapt to yours. Uh, what does that mean? Let's say I like to set my trades to give me an advantage over my opponent and yes there is an opponent every time you buy something you sell something there's somebody on the other end or a machine on the other end that's taking your other side so if you buy a call you think you're a genius the person that's selling you that call the entity selling you the call thinks that you're mistaken that's why they think they're geniuses they're selling you that call one of you is wrong right so my parameters when I buy something are, I like to buy 0.35 delta. We'll go through that exactly later. Uh, so that means I manage that number. If it drops too low, my odds of success are too low. Then I change my mind and I manage the trade. That's what risk management is. is. I manage my odds. That's it. The, the how much is a one-time decision. This is the part I manage. Okay, so what else do pros do? Here's one. Um, the NTNT acronym is silly, but it's so important. Uh, it says no trigger, no trade. So you're saying, okay, even if you don't do charts, the trigger can be a thesis. No thesis, no trade, still NTNT, right? So when you do homework, and that's what I do for you, like today I did, I don't know, six hours of homework and two hours of presentation. So the homework is necessary. What do we do during the homework? I go in <laughs> and I set up a whole bunch of um, trade alerts. So mm, CRM maybe. So you see, I put an alert here. I remember putting that. I, I would put an alert here as well. Uh, so what are these alerts? It's just to, pay my, to bring my attention to the stock because it's tradable at these levels. Like I'll put an alert here. I'll say uh, beating a prior fail. And these are alerts from myself. And the message will come to me and I'll, I'll jump in. I'll know exactly what they're talking about. And I, I should say 15 minutes so I can reconstruct the same chart and know what we're talking about. So now I've done homework. All I have to do is sit and wait. So homework, set alert and wait. NTNT, do not act unless you get a trigger or a thesis. So let me put it this way. You should never take a position without a real reason. And the real reason cannot be something as silly as, I thought it was going to go up. I thought it was going to go down. No. Why did you think it was going to go up? You must have an underlying reason, a thesis, an idea, something that allows you to determine, okay, I was wrong. I'll give you a live example from Friday. The market opened and the market fell apart, right? It was a tough day for the bulls. The market was down 1.2%. And I had somebody jumped into the room. I can't remember his name now. He was kind enough to share his problem trade. And he said, Nick, I have puts for today. They expire today. I'm down 20%. What do I do? I'm thinking to myself, when the heck did you buy these that you're down 20%? He goes, uh, Friday. It's like, wow, I can't imagine the scenario when you bought them and you're still down. But let's deal with it, right? So we dealt with it. And he came out with a profit at the end of the uh, middle of the afternoon. But we had a plan of action. So he had said a, a, he didn't have a reason to buy the puts. He just jumped into them and he got in trouble right away. But luckily we maneuvered them out of it. Uh, but you need to have a reason, a really valid reason. So 
if he bought he what he said is he bought it for an uh, a, a a gap open down well we got an open down and he still didn't make money so that means that the reason didn't work therefore he should have closed the trade immediately with a small loss instead he got stuck in a big loss and we had to deal with it and he ended up okay but the proper thing to do was to close it once he got the thesis and it didn't work then out okay so <clears throat> luckily we managed the odds properly and we got him some profits stop out he failed to stop out but i'm glad he shared it it was a teaching moment or book your profits uh, faster than normal. So something happened to me last week. I had recommended a bullish trade on the S&P and then it rallied. And then we got more than a double. So we we took a position, a long position in the S&P and it was a blunderbuss approach to capture just a move. And it was a um, call butterfly, which I rarely do, but I've done twice in two weeks and they were pretty fantastic. And it was a cost to enter it was two dollars and sixty five cents per contract. So on an up day, it was five fifty, five forty. I said, you know what? I'm going to put an order to close it at five seventy five or five sixty five. I can't remember, and see if it fills. And I didn't pay attention. And then the next day, I was like, where's my position? And it had filled. So it got me out with a profit. Um, so I left some money on the table in hindsight, but I didn't really because. The market took a tumble thereafter so i can re-engage that same position for less money uh if i want to but i was willing and able to book profits and leave money on the table so i got a huge win out of it and i left a ton more money on the table on paper but i did the right thing because that was the right balance for my portfolio at the time so locking profits and booking losses is part of becoming mature some people are just they can't they get frozen Oh my God, I'm down 20%. I can't close it. Well, guess what? If you don't close it when it's down 20%, you could go to down 100%. So you should consider closing it. But it's not blindly, not because you're down. You should consider, like that person from Friday, he didn't just close once we got to that super deep position. We managed out of it. We gave him information that helped him to manage out of it. Excuse me. Throat is killing me. Okay, so... Um, you have to have the maturity to be able to leave money on the table. If you can't, you're not in it for the long term. The long run, you won't last. Okay. Uh, so having balance is, balance is important. Let me see if I can use an example from last week as well. Okay. So I was, I, I can. Okay. I was, um, I was long that position, I told you, in the SPX. And before I got on the plane, I shorted the SPX shorter term. And that pro that trade was a problem trade. So I said I lost on that trade. That day, I had a green PNL because I was in balance. I had two credit put spreads, which are bullish. I had that one credit call spread, which I took after the fact, which lost money. But I also had a bullish position, the SPX debit called Butterfly. And so overall, that day was pretty good. It would have been fantastic had I not had that one loss. So I had balance. So I wasn't too upset. I was pissed off on the plane. I texted my son and I said, can you give me a quote on SPX? And he's like, what the heck is an SPX? <laughs> he's a welder. So I said, go to Yahoo Finance. And he gave me the value. I was like, ah, oh, crap. Yeah, so, but anyway, balance uh, spreads your risk. So when I say spread the risk, that doesn't mean create a spread. It could, but just spread the risk across time, across levels, across tickers, across industries. Like don't be long all the same stock. Don't be short all the same stock. Have a little bit of everything. So this way, every day you've got something working for you. As long as um, you have a thesis to take that position, don't just take any position to have uh, diversity. So, um, and average in. This is the best thing to do right now. The VIX, the Fear Volatility Index, the VIX, you've heard it, you've seen it on CNBC. It's called the Fear Index, right? If I go to a daily chart, this measures um, nervousness. Let me explain to you why. The way I understand it, the VIX itself takes its values from a calculation of whatever is going on in the markets, in the options. So if the options market makers so who is that the big money people that actually sell things so this is a market they sell things in it so they're making that market 
If you've got a bicycle, you want to sell it, you just created a market for bicycles, you're a market maker. So the people, the, the entities that sell everything in here, um, they're charging more than they're normal. So let's put it in insurance terms. If you go out to sell insurance to a teenage boy driver, you're going to charge him more than an older person who lives in the desert because the older person is going to drive slowly in the desert. There's not a lot of cars, not a lot of things to hit. So you would charge him a lower um, premium. Well, right now, the whole market is a teenage boy uh, driving for the first month. So for, for that reason, all the people that are making the markets, they're saying, whoa, 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 we have a huge chance of accidents. Therefore, we should price everything more than they should be. That's why you get the VIX high. So what am I saying? I'm saying that because of the VIX being so high, you shouldn't go all in in anything. I don't care how good your idea is. I was certain that Bitcoin was going to rally. Why? Because I called it at 22 and 19 from November and I shared it with the members. I said, Bitcoin can go to 21, 22, maybe even 19. And it did. And I said, when it gets there, I'm going to load up. And I did, but I refrained from loading up all in because of a few other things, other opinions of people. I value their opinions, so I listened to them a little bit because they're good traders and they're good technicians. So I said, okay, so given what they're saying, given the VIX is so high, I'm not going to go all in. I'm going to take a good size position. And guess, and I shared it. I said, if you want to get long Bitcoin, you can buy Beto. This way you avoid the worst thing about being long Bitcoin, the riskiest thing. Can you can do you know what the riskiest thing about this side note about Bitcoin? The riskiest thing about investing in Bitcoin is not the price of Bitcoin. That's solid. The riskiest thing is where do you put your money? That platform that you choose on your phone. Where who is it? Who is it? I have to tell you, I use crypto.com. It's as solid as it gets. It's not in the US, so I really don't have a clue uh, as to what goes on in the background. So every once in a while, I go to log in and it chokes. I was like, oh, this is the day. This is the day I can't access my money. And um, sometimes it says unable to log in. Um, so you get that flutter, right? Well, if you invest in Bito, B-I-T-O, you don't get that. Why? Because Bito is an ETF that tra trades, that follows the price of Bitcoin, but it, um, it trades on regular US markets. So you can use, uh, you can trade it in your Schwab account. Well, we went long here somewhere. I went long here, but by the time I shared it, it had already climbed to here. And that was still a nice 20% win, 18% win in the stock. If somebody bought calls, it's a leverage win much better than that. Right. Uh, Right. Uh, Nick, really quick here. I'm getting a lot of emails and questions here about the chat room. Uh, a couple of people here on the YouTube uh, asking about the room. So I'm going to go over a couple of these questions and we'll get back here into the session, folks. Go for it. Uh, so Ram, a uh, quick question there from Ram. How can I be part of Nick's trading room alerts? Um, uh, but, you know, with, with having a full time job. Uh, so let's let's knock that one out before we go through the other ones, Nick. So. Well, <laughs> how can you be part of the live room? Uh, it's very simple. Join the group. And here's the easy part about it. I'm going to do two things. Actually, I'm going to do one thing. And Rodrigo is going to do the other thing. And that's going to make it a slam dunk decision for you. The first thing, I'm going to guarantee it. I'm going to guarantee it that you are going to become a better trader in our group. Whatever you do, I'm not saying I'm the best trader. In fact, I can guarantee you I am not the best trader in the room. I am pretty good at reading a situation as on the macro level and putting it into practice. And the Fed is one eye-opening thing that will happen this week, and we'll see if I'm right or wrong. And the other thing is I'm pretty good with the charts in plain, simple English and pretty good with the options in plain, simple English. So I won't drown you with jargon, bullshit jargon. Oops, excuse me. BS jargon. It's not as complicated as they tell you to be. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to guarantee you, uh, you will become a better trader in my group. I don't care your level. If you're a beginner, it's a slam dunk guarantee. If you already trade pretty good, I'm pretty sure you're going to pick up a trick or two that you didn't know, or it wasn't so obvious and now it's solidified. Or the fact that you can ping your ideas against 300 other people in the room that are looking out for you. 
and uh, the opportunities are just endless. Your watch list is immediately going to multiply folds over because um, of everybody else in there. Right, right. Okay. That's so my guarantee. Rodrigo's guarantee is that he will give you your money back if you don't like it. Right. And there's a bunch of questions here. I just gathered what I could from all you guys like hitting no. me up. So um, so does Nick Shaheen go over student trade ideas? Uh, yes, all the time. Are the sessions on Sunday recorded? Absolutely. And they are posted on the chat room. Does everybody that joined get a free laptop? Yes. Um, what is the chat room schedule? That's Monday to Friday, 9 to 5 p.m. Well, actually like 8.30, 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern. And sometimes later it rolls off. But, but then you also meet on Sundays from 10 to 1 p.m. Eastern. That's the Sunday session. You put in your tickers. Uh, let's see. Is there a money back guarantee? Yes. So just for the people that joined today from this webinar, you guys will have a 30 day money back guarantee. That 30? is just, wow. ju just until midnight. OK, guys, we're doing this just until midnight. You have to join with the link from this chat room. There's no other way to get this deal. Uh, next question. What is the price of renewal? It's going to be the same as today. It's like 75 percent off. It's like twelve ninety seven a year. Pennies on the dollar from this man's time, really. Uh, does Nick provide options education? on the daily on the daily and um well i guess the last question here i guess uh, uh ram asked if it was kind of similar um how can somebody uh, get you know full advantage of this not as a full-time uh trader i'm sorry if they have a full-time job but maybe if they have a part-time job or they're just trying to learn <laughs> um here's here's the 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 schedule thing is uh, very the schedule thing is sensitive. I realize some people have um, commitments, either family commitments, job commitments, or both. And time is of the essence. That's why I did it the way I did it. So first of all, I deliver messages via emails. Those are mess or posts. Those are messages are, uh, they're not that time sensitive. So if I come up with a trade idea, I write it up. Sometimes I do a video. I'm doing fewer videos now because people are just asking for more, just simpler line. I love the videos. I wish they would come back and ask me for more videos. Uh, so um, you will get the note. You will have time to review it. Sometimes I send it at night and say, tomorrow I'm looking at this. Other times I say, I just did this. You might want to consider it. And here are the pluses and minuses, and here are the threats and uh, and good things. And then um, you also have recourse. So you read it, the, the post, the mail, you come back and say, I have follow-up questions, and you dump it on me inside the chat room, which is static, available to you 24-7. So there's no way it doesn't fit your schedule. If you have a minute to drink water, you have a minute to come and ask me something. And I don't leave uh, unanswered questions. So you can ask me in in private via DM or in the stream and you'll see people contribute their own setups as well here and they, they start this is mine uh, and they start talking to each other and saying hey what do you do with that what how do you do this and they share their own charts these are not my charts <laughs> these are not my charts so this is my chart this is my chart um so here i'm saying a minute to minute to even the people that are not in it for minute to minute right but i do have the um, the live room, which is uh, different, that is for the person who actually is lucky enough to have time to join me uh, live. So the live room would look like this is my screen that they're watching, 15 second chart. This is what um, uh, they, the members, this is where they ask me questions. Uh, so remember I told you um, it was Vic. <laughs> Vic was the one with the calls from Friday. He popped in and said, oh, I've got a problem. And Daniel was excited about the spy because it was doing that rally back late in the day. And Vic says, thanks for the help. I got out with my uh, puts. Those are the puts that he had bought for the dip that never came or that came that didn't pay him. And he got out with a small profit. How funny that I pick one picture and that was his. Uh, other pictures... Um, they are, I promise you, I have, I don't know, maybe a hundred of them. Hey, Nick, uh, them. Really quick here. Just want to give a shout out here to, uh, ER, uh, 75. Welcome to the family newest member here of the options inner circle chat room. Let's go. So, uh, we even had, <laughs> I had a situation last week, which is pretty awkward. So there was a, another Benzinga mentor 
who had uh, we share members and some of the members had some issues with some of their trades and they came here for help and i provided some help and then they got wind of it and they had some pleasant things to say about me so even within benzinga um the camaraderie is there so um i'm pretty sure we're doing something right if we are doing it since 2011 and uh, we have as many people as we do uh usually i have about 130 people logged in here uh on any given day and i have about 300 live in the in the room and they're not mutually i mean they are mutually almost exclusive because uh some people the people that have time love the live room because it's just buzzing it's buzzing and it's hilarious um and what um but some people just can't make it and that's fine and i contribute to them here as much as i can on the fast stuff but if it's minute to minute i don't provide it here because it's just impossible but if the setup could have like half an hour on it, I'll provide it here. And if the setup is two, three weeks, maybe a month, I'll share it via official write-up and say, this is a trade setup that I would do for myself. Example, mm, Microsoft in the last couple of weeks had a couple of dips. And I said, you know what? You know, Given this environment going into the earnings, I can take a Microsoft long position where I don't need a rally to win. And I would provide uh, the, the parameters for it. Um, <clears throat> Lockheed Martin traded it three times successfully already, one short, one bull, and another one that was an iron condor, which is an agnostic trade. And now it's coming back into view. It's like, hmm, maybe I want to trade it one fourth time. So today in my run-up, uh, somebody asked for Lockheed Martin. I think it's in here somewhere. LMT. See, iron condor number three, I put a question mark. Uh, J&J, I'm interested if it doesn't have earnings. Uh, so I come up with these. And then I share them. Square, I said, it's time to get long. It, it, it played out. Um, a couple other ones like that that I can't remember off the top of my head now. But the setups that have some life for normal people who have a job go out in a not so hasty manner. So if you get it within two, three hours, it's OK. It might be a little different price-wise. Sometimes it spikes and it gets out of control or it drops and gets out of control. But they're essentially designed for normal people schedules and then i have the abnormal 300 people that can spend all day with me i love it my life is so much fuller because of it and i'm tied to this beautiful chair which i just bought because i find myself sitting 10 hours a day now uh so it is it's necessary for me to be comfortable so i sprang for the buck with this one i'll give you a report on it after a couple of weeks of use to see if it's worth it uh, so far, so good. Um, so <clears throat> there are plenty of opportunities to all different speeds. For example, this trade setup went out. It wasn't hasty. I said, hey, you know my story with Bitcoin. You know I've been looking to buy the dip. You know I want to load up at this level. The reason I didn't is because somebody out there that I respect says it can get cut in half. So I'm giving them some benefit of the doubt. So I'm going not all in. And I shared the trade idea. So if they got it that day, they took it the next day, they got 15 to 19% yield on risk within a few days. Uh, outstanding. And today they reached out. Did you book it? I said, personally, I didn't. In fact, I didn't even take this trade because I have a lot. Of, I, what I did is I bought Ethereum and, and Solana. So I, I've actually bought crypto uh, coins as opposed to Beto. But I would have bought Beto. This is Bitcoin. It tracks the Bitcoin futures. So the reason why you see it uh, all the way down, because they introduced it at the very top of Bitcoin when I did the video and I said, Bitcoin is going to crash. <clears throat> I'm a believer in, I'm a believer in the unbelievers being wrong. You know, the, like JP, Dim Jamie Dimon, and um, with all due respect, the people from Berkshire, they're being asses about it, to tell you the truth. If you're in the business of investing in assets that grow and you say, I choose to uh, completely cut out the best asset, fact, not opinion, that's mathematical fact, uh, then you're really just uh, looking to invest in second best. And uh, so you can not well, like it, but you, for example, I may not like the Mona Lisa, but I would buy a reprint if I know that I can make money off of it, right? That's fake. It's not the original, but there's a market for it because enough people like it. So it doesn't matter if Bitcoin is fake or not. It's besides the point. The point is 
it trades awesome trade it <laughs> you don't have to marry it so whether you trust it believe it uh, think it's hogwash it doesn't matter it trades incredibly well trade it make money off of it anyway don't be harsh and, and and make stupid statements about buying farmland and buying bitcoin for free if somebody offers you bitcoin for a penny or whatever he said uh, buffett take it <laughs> he made a comment about farmland google it you'll know what i mean like what what are you talking about <laughs> uh, respect but geez louise that was silly um so back to the core subject which is becoming better traders i think you will i'm confident you will become a better trader with our group and um if not 30 days i've never seen you guys give 30 days uh for a money back guarantee usually it's seven days uh that's new so um i'm not nervous because the longer you're with me the less uh, the less hasty you are at finding the value. So you will take your time finding the value. So that may be a good thing, actually, long term. And um, let's see here. I do have access to trady tick alerts in my uh, feed. So I pay big money for it, and I pass it along to you. <clears throat> Eventually, I may make it available to you. I just haven't figured out how to do it technically. Uh, it is something new. So I'm paying 200 a month or so. For that and i'll give you access to it what does that provide it provides what they call dark pool information and algo information which is i can't stand those two terms but they are big factors in the price action therefore and now i have a source i was blind to it and i was doing well without it but now i have a source that extra layer of information for you so i share that with you we do a lot of harmonics what are those it's those green things you see here and sometimes they're red they are incredible money makers if you know how to use them right not great alerts really quick here nick want to give a shout out here to our brother here newest member of the options inner circle chat room family ram trade let's go brother give you a good right on right on um hey, i stopped welcome. calling i've stopped giving people sexes because i thought persia was a girl and when i called him a girl he says dude i'm a guy but that's okay i got your back you're making me money <laughs> so right. by the way i do want to add in something here guys um for you to know like personally i'm a trader i've been trading for a couple of years now before i joined benzinga as well and uh really you know nick was a, a very you know someone that has a definitely helped me out a lot with not just understanding terminology concepts and but also really approaching options with the right mentality not like a casino um that's really you know my my initial you know perception of of options and really once uh nick pretty much explained all the different types of trades the credit put spreads and once he had explained the risk management part and all that stuff i felt a lot more confident to get into spreads and it's, you know that that's just a uh, big, big shout out there to nick just you know i i, I appreciate i see you in there there's another person named rod in there so i know i can never tell which one is which but so i'm glad you mentioned it in fact let's let's just go there i want to get everybody out of the mindset that gets everybody in trouble so let's go to apple i mentioned earlier to use apple as an example i'm going to go to october so um, I don't, I can't see the chat room. So I'm going to assume that we have people that have never done options and they're scared about the fact that options are riskier than stocks. They are not riskier than stocks. They can be riskier than stocks, but they can be also safer than stocks. And let me give you one scenario. First of all, what am I looking at? All these numbers, Nick, what the hell? Uh, so let me take it out. This is Apple. So, uh, and uh, these are different time frames. I chose October for no reason. Actually, I have a reason, but anyway. So everything you see here, whoops, sorry. Everything you see here, they are contracts that deal with Apple stock, okay? They come in two flavors. The left side is are the calls. The right side are the puts. They're not bearish. They're not bullish. Both are both. Depends on what you do with them. I promise you. So get rid of what you know about options. I'm going to talk to you in plain simple english so uh, contracts have uh, stipulations they have terms and conditions right when you enter into a contract there there's this rule there's that rule there's this rule let's go through a couple of the big ones here the biggest one being october time 89 days on everything on this page everything on this page is 89 days long 
it expires in 89 days <clears throat> at the close of business day uh ding 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 they draw the line where's apple let's 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 settle the scores okay so what what else uh price i can pick and choose whatever price i want on either side of this equation okay what else um quantity everything here represents 100 shares i do one contract regardless of what it is i'll explain it in a second one contract represents 100 shares so everything here is 100 shares this one this one this one whichever one i choose i can't move it this way would not be nice uh they're 100 shares so now we just did three time price and quantity okay so let's get into what these things are first of all do i need to own shares to do any of this nope in fact, you buy calls to get into shares, the opportunity to get into shares. What does that mean? Let's say you wanted to buy Apple shares. You're a little bit nervous about the Fed. You want to lock your price in just in case Apple takes off because it's got earnings. What do you do? You can spend thousands risking your money to buy 100 shares. And you're at risk right here right now with a giant pile of money. How can you reduce that risk using options? You can buy one call. You buy one call, you lock your price in for that level. What level is that? You choose. You choose. Let's say you, you buy it at current price, which is 154. So I say I'll buy the 155 call. <clears throat> it's going to cost me $940. Remember, it says 940, but it's 100 shares. Okay. So it's $940. You're saying, whoa, $1,000. Yeah, but you're long without putting more at risk. When you buy 100 shares of Apple, that's a crap more than that. Plus, you can go higher, pay less. Why is it cheaper higher? Because uh, you're locking your price at a higher price. So you're foregoing some action. And you have less of uh, the chances of winning. The higher you go, uh, the fewer the chances. Make sure I don't think I put the sign up. Anyway, so... Um, the call opportunity is to get you into the stock. You're basically reserving your price. You can buy it in the money and pay up a lot. I don't like to do that. Uh, so this is the function of a call. The buyer of the call reserves the right to buy shares at that price. So you're basically locking in your price. Uh, the seller of the call uh, has the obligation to deliver those shares at that price. So they better own them. Okay, so every trade has two sides there's a buyer and there's a seller the buyer does homework they think the seller is crazy the seller gets homework the, the seller is basically thinking apple is not going to go anywhere and they're like um, they, they 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 will take the money not necessarily bearish convoluted way of explaining it but it's not necessarily bearish all right so what about the put side okay so the puts are different let's say you already own shares and you just want to protect yourself uh, you can buy puts and say, you know what? I own shares. I got in at 70. I'm okay losing down to 130 and then I want out. So you buy one put that protects 100, 100 shares. If the stock falls apart, uh, that guarantees you the sale of the shares at that price. So you're not bearish the stock. If you were bearish the stock, you would get rid of it, right? You don't insure a car if you're not wanting to keep it. So you wanted to keep it, so you spend some money protecting it. So what about the seller? There is a seller of that put. What do they do? The seller has the obligation. Notice I've used the word obligation twice now, every time for the seller. When you sell puts and calls, when you sell options, you open risk. You give somebody control over your money. Meanwhile, they give you money in return. So you become the insurance salesperson for that person who's wanting to buy insurance on Apple. So you do your homework and say, you're nervous about your stock at 130. I'll tell you what, I'll buy it from you. For that, they pay you almost $300. So what happens if they don't give you the shares? Nothing. You keep the $300, you made money, you become an insurance salesman person. So that is the buyer and the seller of the put. They're both bullish. I wouldn't sell a put unless I want to own shares. So I'm not bearish. I just want to buy it at a cheaper price. The person buying the put is not bearish. They want to keep their shares. That's why they're buying the insurance. The only scenario where is a bearish with the put is when I buy a put and I don't own shares. The only way I can make money is if the price falls. 
And then that $265 turns into 455, 700, whatever it is. If Apple falls to 105, this would be a thousand bucks. So you would make money out of thin air. But if nothing happens, you lose your money. And what do they say about options? Most options expire worthless. So what do you want to do more than others? I want to be a seller more than a buyer. If most options, if most options expire worthless, sellers win more often. So the trick is finding good stuff to sell under support at good time frames, avoid risk and all of that. And that's what I do. I like to sell things, puts or put spreads um, when I have the statistical advantage. So that brings us to a huge discussion in options. Statistical advantage. Okay. So forget what you know about options. If you buy stock, you have a 50-50 shot of winning. You think you have better odds because you do homework. You know things that you think that most um, traders don't. So you say, oh, I have a chance to make money here before everybody else gets a whiff of what I'm thinking. You may be right, but mathematically, there's no advantage. You buy shares, you have a 50-50 shot of making money. It can go up, it can go down. Uh, time is not important. You can wait forever. Now, with options, if you buy a call, you have a 50-50 shot if you buy it at the current price. Except time is of the essence. If nothing happens, this will dwindle. Every minute that it ticks, this loses money. So you need to move and fast. Depend well, in this case, you need it within 89 days. Uh, so meanwhile, you're losing premium. You're losing money. That's the difference between owning shares and, and options. That's why options are dangerous because people get, oh, I'll buy this, I'll buy that, I'll buy this, I'll buy that. And then before you know it, look, whoa, what happened to my account? It's like half the size it is. It used to be. That's because you've been buying left and right and most options expire worthless. <laughs> You're doomed to lose money. So you should sell some stuff too because then if nothing happens, you win. When I sell a spread, I need absolutely nothing to happen. That's how I win when something does not happen. Uh, the only time I lose is when the gosh dang CEO of Snap comes out in between two earnings reports and updates us about his suckiness and then the stock drops. <laughs> yes, that happened. Uh, so we lost some money on that credit put spread. Out of the blue, he comes out and says, ah, we're going to suck wind. And phew, and that was before the earnings report. So that, that lost us money. So in this case, the odds are equal to the buyer of this and to the seller of that. So earlier I mentioned that we have, we can read the odds of success off the ta data table. So now I'm going to bring your attention to that column that would allow us to do that. Um, you remember here, where was it? This guy. So I said, I like to choose my odds of success from the get-go. Right. In options, I said it's easy. You can pick it off the table. This is where it lives, this delta column. So you can go study the Greeks the way Wall Street trained you well to, be, to do. Study the Greeks um, and get the definition. The definition is going to sound something like this is the amount of change that this contract will have, will suffer experience with a change of $1 in the underlying. So I would like to give you that, go read it and tell me how would you put that to real practical use? Or you can take my definition of the Delta. This is your odds maker. If it's 0.5, you have a 50, 50 shot of winning. You don't believe me? Okay. Go up the chain. Look at that number drop. Let's go to 200 within October. This is saying, how small is this number? 0 0.03, okay? Not even, 0 0.03. So in plain, simple English, this says there is very little chance, that's a little number, that Apple, the stock, will be at 200 within 89 days. That's what that says. There is very little chance that Apple would be 200 in 89 days. That's what the delta is. Here, there's a very good chance. It's right there right now. It's a coin flip, in fact. There's a little bit less than a coin flip, a little bit less than that, a little bit less than that, a little bit less than that. This is about 15%, okay? 
I like to buy 35, 0.35. Why? It gives me some distance, so that's extra, extrinsic value that could explode. Um, and it gives me uh, some proximity to the coin flip. So the coin flip is Vegas, right? If I step away a little bit from Vegas, I pay a little bit less money. And if I'm if my timing is right, I get a good punch out of it. Um, so this would be my choice personally. So I would choose that for me as a starting point if I'm buying things. If I'm selling things, I want to sell things that are destined to die, which is something less than 0.15. If this has a 15% chance of happening, I don't want to risk anything when I'm selling that is closer to current price than that. What does that mean? It means that when I'm selling insurance to somebody, I want to make sure that they have room to run before they hit my level of bearishness. And uh, conversely, if I'm selling something down there in puts, uh, vice versa, I want something that has very low odds of happening. For example, this, this 125, um, where is it? That's the delta for the put side. This says that th there's very little chance that Apple will be 125 in 89 days. It's like 12%, 13, 12, 15, something like that. Uh, so I have a only a 10% chance, theoretically, I would lose on this one. Only a 15% chance I would lose on that one. So those would be two edges I would sell in an iron condor, for example. So basically, I'm saying that for me, it's much easier for me, much easier to tell you where a stock is not likely to go than to try to pinpoint it. For example, this is Apple. This is a two hour chart. So this is saying, I'm saying, I'm comfortable telling you Apple is not gonna be below here in the next 89 days. I'm also saying Apple is not gonna be above here. Is that what I said? Where it was here, 185 above here. So I'm saying there's a good chance that Apple is going to be inside this box. What just happened? Where is it? Oh, okay. Inside this box, this is actually higher for the next 89 days, which is easier to say that or to say, yep, Apple's going to here. <clears throat> I charted the scenario to get to here, but I didn't say buy calls. I said, buy the dip somewhere in here. So wait for the dip, which is likely coming. If not, it's going to break out. So how do I trade that? I can sell a put spread where I don't need a rally and I leave room for error and buy a call spread where I would need a rally, but I have time to react to salvage it. So, or I would sell an iron condor outside this box and wait for time to do the work for me. All these are tricks with options that do what? They get me into trades where my odds of success are mathematically markedly higher than my opponent, than the buyer or the seller of whatever I'm doing. So when I'm buying, I'm buying low delta, um, like high delta, sorry, like closer to current price. When I'm selling, I'm selling low deltas that give me the advantage again. So if you're smart about that, then you're not part of the herd that keeps losing with the options and saying the options suck. That's because you're not playing them right. And I think the disconnect happens the way people think about options. The easy symptom, about, the, the most obvious symptom is you hear uh, CNBC jump out, uh, Nigerians come out and say uh, they are buying the 175 call in Apple for October. Really? No one's selling it? They're just buying it out of thin air? Every buyer, there's a seller. What they should do is they are transacting the 175 call. And my interpretation of that action tells me that the buyer is smarter than the seller. That's what they should say, but they don't say it that way. Instead, they're saying they are buying this and they're selling that, where in reality, they're buying and selling it one to one. Uh, so people see 49,000 calls, ooh, they pile into it. Whereas the first statement of options, most options expire worthless. Isn't that most options right there, right? So why would I wanna buy and hold? So unless I'm the first one in the door seeing this happen where everybody's going to chase it, <laughs> I'm making a mistake chasing high numbers. In fact, I make a living selling these kinds of moves. Uh, so, But the information is there. There's a ton of information. So what I want you to do is, even if you don't join, think about options from the casino. Okay. So if you go to a casino, the house wins. 
Otherwise, the casino doesn't exist. The market exists because most of us lose. Otherwise, the market would not exist, I guarantee it. So how do I make money knowing that, that I'm at a disadvantage from as soon as I decide to trade or I set my foot in the casino? Trade like a market maker. Find what everybody's doing and see how you can make money off of it. Um, FOMO is something you should use to your advantage. I'll give you an example. So I call it the Barracuda incident. I was with my son. He was probably 12. I can't remember, 12, something like that. With his friend, we were waist deep in Cancun body surfing. And then I see a Barracuda that's bobbing vertically. I was like, oh, look at that dead Barracuda. And then it wasn't there. Like, wait, where'd it go? <laughs> and then we see it coming at us. So I know they don't eat people, but we turned around and booked it anyway. So on our way running to the shore, we passed a woman who turned around and started running with us for no reason. And then she goes, why are we running? So that's FOMO, right? That's instinct of survival. You have to overcome it in trading. So when you see everybody beelining for a place, you should run back in the room and see what they left behind. Maybe somebody left a wallet. Or running out of a place, you should go in and see if somebody left something valuable to, pro to profit from it. So you have to overcome your, your feeling because that's going to make you make mistakes. I guarantee it. And you have to start looking. Like, when you get that feeling, it's like, wait, wait, wait. Everybody else is getting that same feeling. What can I do to profit from that? That's where you get to think like a market maker. So you have to learn a word. And it's called a straddle. And you have to know exactly what it means. And I'll shed a whole bunch of light about that. And it'll be like, what? That can't be this easy. Yes and yes, it is this easy. So challenge issued. You should learn what a straddle means and how you can make money because that's how market makers make money. And that's how I make money every freaking day for the whole group. They call it the box. Um, on expiration days for the SPY, which is three days a week, I draw a box around where I think they're going to close and I narrow it and narrow it and narrow it and narrow it. And then at the end of the day, I'll have a pretty tight range. All this information is tradable and you win that day. And we trade it through the SPX as well. The SPX expires every day, but the data from the SPX is not as sharp as the SPY. It's not as liquid. So the SPX is paying us every day, every day. I mentioned Persia earlier. He's making thousands every day because he's following the rules. And if you can't do credit spreads, I have debit spreads that mimic credit spreads. So I coined, uh, you know, an iron condor. I would call it like a, a, an iron, iron locust because it's a debit spread. It's mimic. It mimics a credit spread. Look up the movie Mimic. You'll know what I'm talking about. Okay. So this is a, a glimpse of what options can do for us. And if you think like a market maker... Um, so I'll, I'll set you on the right path with this uh, straddle mystery statement. So if I was a market maker and, uh, and I'm selling things, I'm selling this, these two things. If I sell <clears throat> the um, most expensive things on this page, it's this, the call and the put at current price. Where is it? 154. So let's go to 154. They call and put at current price. Um, so I'm collecting, I'm going to round $9, $10 from the person who buys this put and $10 from the person who buys this call. This person is hopeful Apple is going to rally so they can make money. This person is hopeful that Apple is going to fall so they can make money. I'm the market maker. I'm the casino. I'm selling those two things for them, right? And I'm going to collect $20 times 100 from them, right? So how do I make money? If nothing happens and price dies about where it is, those two things are going to die for zero, correct? When you buy a call and price doesn't move, that call goes to zero. When you buy a put, price doesn't move, that call goes to zero. So I would have made essentially nine, I mean, um, 20 bucks, 18 to $20 out of thin air. Why? Because they're going to expire for zero and I collected almost two grand to open this thing. I win. I'm the market maker. Okay, so let's say, let's just say in on expiration day, <coughs> excuse me. This can be any any time frame. On expiration day, um, the price is at uh, 145. 
okay? So what happens? Uh, this person lost their money. They bought a call, price didn't rally. In fact, it fell. So they lost all their money. I keep their 10 bucks, right? This person made money. When they bought it, it was 155. It closed at 145. Actually, they didn't make money. They broke even because they paid $10 for it. So yeah, it made $10 for them, but they paid 10 to be there. So they broke even. What happened to me, the person that sold both? Um, I won 10 here. I had to give this guy back his 10. I broke even. So how does the market maker win if they can keep price inside the range that they collected? So 155 to 135 is their profit zone, okay? Because they collect 10 from this guy and 10 from this guy, this person or that person. So they have $20 of leeway. So even if this falls to 135, okay? This person still loses. It didn't rally. They spent $10. Psst, that's gone. Uh, this person won because they bought it at 155. Now it's 135. They only paid $10. They made $10. And the market maker uh, collected 20. And they had to pay this guy 20. So they made no money. So um, market makers are behooved to keep prices inside the straddle. Keep that in mind when you're buying options. You don't want to buy outside the straddle. Why? In order for you to win, if you buy this one, you need the market maker to lose money. Because if it goes to 130, the market maker will lose money because they have to pay this person 25 bucks and they only collected 2000 20 dollars. So they lose five dollars per contract, five hundred dollars. So they will do all they can, cheat, scratch, you know, scream, and to uh, get price above. So if you look into buy puts, uh, buy puts inside this straddle, like <clears throat> this one. Uh, you remember I said I like 0.35 deltas. That's the delta column. Okay, that it should put you uh, set you on the the right path of thinking about options. Think like a micro market maker. I would love it if I would never buy another option in my entire life. It was an aha moment. I was like, wait, what? Yeah, I don't want to buy anything. I do buy things here and there, but usually I sell things against them. So that's the ideal situation is to start to think like somebody who's actually playing the board, setting the board, not right. can I can I buy this? Can I buy that? What's up? So now the and how how would you think somebody that is an active day trader can use this, right? Somebody that's maybe uh, like we, we talked about, you know, the, the trader that has a full time job, right? All that stuff or a part time job. Now, let's talk about the more active trader. How can they benefit from from your skills okay. and your chat room schedule? OK, stuff? so the active trader is going to figure it out within the first half hour. Uh, so the morning starts. I have charts and charts and charts laid out. Um, I usually go to five minutes and lay out the day for us with big picture, grosso modo pictures. This, this, I said this was available before the market fell. And I said I made the arrow as big as possible and look at where they went, right? And then I identified the turn for the rally back and the resistance, five minute doji, support, five minute doji. This is homework, dark pool levels for 294 million. There's another dark pool level at 395 you need to pay attention to um, Monday. Is today Sunday? Yeah, so tomorrow. Uh, so I share all of this stuff, the big picture. We have 300 people already talking. And then uh, once the day starts, I dropped a one minute chart and now we're starting to trade actively. And then when it heats up pretty badly, we go to 15 second chart. Why? We see four, time, four times as many ticks as the average bear out there. So then we can fight with, uh, with skill. We are skilled fighters intraday. We have options data. I'm watching this stuff like a freaking hawk at a, an expiration of Monday. Uh, this is Monday. Uh, sorry, this is Friday. <clears throat> Uh, the SPY expires on Monday, expires on Wednesday, expires on Friday. The SPX has one that expires every day. So this data is Monday. Friday's action, look, 106 contracts, 106,000 contracts, 100,000, 70,000, 50,000, 100,000. These are supports for Monday. And then you have resistance building up here. Uh, so right off the bat, I tell you, you know, it's going to be between 
in here. That's the fight. And then we start narrowing that fight as the day progresses. And all this provides entry opportunities. Like if we dip into this, I would probably say buy the dip with a tight stop against the level or against something. And we were pretty accurate with it. So the active trader can jump in and watch, 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 practice, practice, ask what happened? How could I do this? What level? And then I would say something if from your question, it tells me that you haven't done this before, that, then you should practice with fake money first. And then I say, I would buy the call, this call, that call. I would exit here, exit there, let it run. And I would sell a put spread. Like in the morning, if we open down big time and I see support, I say, I'm going to catch the falling knife by selling a put spread in the SPX and uh, just wait. So, right. And uh, we have a quantum there in the chat saying, I was going to load up on NVIDIA calls to sell this week on earnings. Oh, whoa, whoa, but, whoa, uh, whoa. but the chip, hold on, we don't, he's like, but the chip deal in Pelosi uh, got me. I, I have been able to grab the puts for cheap, just waiting for a nice. So, let's just show quantum like how the live trading room would be if this, would, you know, you know what I mean? Like, just to show the people. How okay, so I've, I'm going to first show you. On the dip, I sold the put spread uh, 3945, 3940, that one. And that was Friday, SPX. And then it came under fire. I collected whatever I collected, and it went against me by a lot. But I didn't shake out of it because I had the data that supported me, this data that supported me. I was like, wait, I think the market makers want to pull up and close spy at or at least not close they needed to come up to 395 at one point and sure enough boom they went and as soon as they passed here i was green green and somewhere here before the market closed i said you know what it's five cents to close my bet i'm gonna close it you never know what happens crazy you know and i paid five cents to close the whole bet and i won um <clears throat> and those who followed me actually did an iron condor so they sold call spread up here and they made 25 percent yield in a matter of eight hours, 25%. And that happens every day. I promise you the opportunity is, is there every day. Now you mentioned NVIDIA. Um, first of all, I wouldn't load up on anything, friend. <laughs> not right now. You can strategically trade, but I would not load up on anything, okay? Second of all, um, be aware that NVIDIA is in a bearish stint. I charted it months ago and i said it and amd are go amd was going to the 60s and i believe it got there or close to it um <clears throat> from when it was up here so this you can see it a giant head and shoulders right and they lost it and technically you should drop as big as the head so i assigned it two arrows this was my realistic target it doesn't have to get there but what happens is now the machines, the algo, the algorithms are in sell rally mode. So every level that NVIDIA tries to recover, like 180 is one of those levels. In fact, I would pick 187, 186.7 as significant. And let's see what it does there. In fact, I should draw a line there while we're doing homework, 180s. It just popped into my view, so 186.7. I'm not going to waste it. And it's not a zone, it's a line, a significant line. Okay, so I want to pay attention to it. I expect sellers to be lurking up here. So dips may be bought, but it's not going to be easy to bust out of 180. So I don't know what the person said. Are they loading up on selling calls? So they're bearish, so they don't disagree with me. Uh, technically, on a two-hour chart, you might have a bear brewing. It hasn't prevailed itself yet. It's almost there, maybe. We'll see. Uh, and if that's the case, then it could have a revisit of this little gap area here <clears throat> in uh, whenever. And that would be normal, believe it or not. Look, they're, if, if they are indeed ascending now, right then they might be buying dips and the dip will be normal inside this ascending channel in fact you could argue that they already dipped here a uh, smaller time frame but they already did so are they buying dips now and how will they prevail against the prior major fail zone that's the line i just drew 
It's not going to be easy, folks. So I don't remember what that person said. There is a scenario for it to lose that and finish the job to like 105. I don't want it to go there, but if it goes there, it would make technical sense. So if I'm open to it, then I'm not making stupid mistakes. All right, what else you got? What time is it? What time did we start? <laughs> and uh, about a, about one one ish around there. I have uh, somebody here asking about your favorite stock, Palantir. <laughs> it is uh, not my favorite, but I am long and winning from it, so it is my favorite now. Uh, so Palantir, it is misunderstood. So there's a basket of small crap stocks. You heard that right, small crap. Uh, they're not crap. They're trading like crap. Look at it. Uh, so a whole bunch of stocks got stuck with this ARK Invest bullcrap. And uh, she was like the worst thing that happened to this market uh, from the perspective of, I invite you to challenge her concept. And funny, two tangents I'm going to go off on, but I'll come back to this one. One, ARK Invest, go to their website, their front page, giant bold letters. It says, Two things that should never be said for investors. Number one, it says, we solely invest. What? Where have you heard, put your eggs in all, all your eggs in one basket? That's what that statement is. I put all my eggs in one basket. That's what she's saying. We solely invest. That's uh, flag number one. Flag number two is in innovation. Uh, innovation is nothing working now, something in the future. OK, so she is putting all of her eggs in one basket for a giant home run or a whiff. That's how she invests. That is how a 20 year old invests. That's not a mode of investing long term. So I caution you. I like the fact that she was trying to change the world, how transparent she is. Two days ago in the live room, I said, I bet you she's going to have to change her method. She is like the Herbalife situation. Ackman told everybody he's short Herbalife. All big money went after him and they buried him in that trade. She tells her book every day. And now I read that she's going to stop doing that. Transparency is now a problem because people see what she's long. They go after her publicly. So this is one of the stocks that fit that profile. And this is a stock that is growing very well. It's a high growth stock that spends a lot of money. So people are misinterpreting this. The last time they reported twice, they fell on the message that their uh, government business is dropping. Who gives a flying fart about that? So if a, star, if a store sells apples and oranges and the store grow, grew its business 35%, which they did, 34, 37, something like that, does it matter that they sold more oranges than apples or apples and oranges? It doesn't. They're losing business from the government, maybe, maybe not, but they're making it up in the private sector. So what does it matter? That was knock number one. The growth of 35% to sell off 20, 30% in the stock is ridiculous. Their second complaint was, they being the experts out there, uh, the second complaint was um, their, um, their executives are getting making too much money. Okay. So you forego an opportunity of a store because the CEO pays him or herself a little bit too much money? Ridiculous. So anyway, I got into September, um, August, $8 call in that, and I shared it with the team. And then uh, I paid $1.10 for it per call. It went up to $265 or $270. I forgot where, maybe here. And I said, I'm going to book it because I couldn't find any calls to sell against it, like covered calls uh, that were worthy. And so I sold some and I left some. I sold enough to be long for free. And then this happened. I think this was it. And then I said, you know what? I'm willing to rebuy what I had. I said, instead of being August, because we're running out of time, I'm going to go to September $9 call. And those were about $1.20. So I sent out another note about that. So they got long that. I look in my portfolio. I couldn't find it anywhere. So my order did not fill. And so I got stuck staying long the August $8 calls, which I'm still long and still pretty profitable and um, good company for the long term. 11 is going to be a, a struggle technically, but once they clear it, I think they can get the 14 and 15. And once Wall Street understands it a little bit more, 
it'll be like Roku. Remember Roku? I complained about it for the longest time. If you've known me for a long time, I was I made fun of it. You've been in business 16 years. You can't make a profit. Come on. That was my statement publicly about Roku. Well, it turns out that the environment finally suits it. So now they're making money hand over fist. Uh, same with these guys. Artifi artificial intelligence, that's what they do. It's been around forever, but eh, like a novelty thing. Now there's so much data. Everybody's online. You can't process the data without the help of machines. So artificial intelligence services like Palantir is going to become more in demand than before. So the market is coming to them. They've been out there forever. This is an old company. It is not new. Okay, it's new to Wall Street. Uh, I don't think it's a SPAC. It's some sort of back backwards uh, deal that they did. The company was founded in 2003. You know Peter Thiel? I think um, it's a household name. You should remember it. So they're not uh, spring chicken. You know they've they've been around for a while. So the fact that they pay themselves a lot is not strange. Okay, so that's Palantir. I'm long. I would buy dips. Right now, what about the overall energy sector? We really haven't discussed that. <laughs> Where do you think that's going to go, considering you're, everything that's happening? You're not going to like it. <laughs> okay, so I made a lot of money for us shorting energy. Um, <laughs> people in the service hated it. Uh, they argued with me. I said, do what you want. I'm shorting energy. I shorted Oxy, Exxon and the USO and one big on all of them. And I shared my trades and they were simple. The USO wasn't simple. It was a, well, it was simple to me. I sold the call spread. It was in the money one day, like bad, um, in the money, like in a negative situation. Um, and I bought puts, straight up puts and put calendar, I think I put diagonal in Exxon and they were monster wins because that was just before this happened. We nailed the top. And then I set an alert on all of them to reshort the rallies. And this one is getting close. Occidental is the funnest one because everybody's chasing blindly the god of investing, Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is not buying the stock to make money off the stock. He's trying to get the company so he can profit off of its cash flows. That is not the same thing. Um, I know somebody that works indirectly through Oxy, and the only reason their PL is looking so good is the price of oil and that price is artificially high oil is not a crisis it's a crisis of uh, policy we have access to more than oil that we can ever consume and we're going to consume a lot less by law for the future every car company said they're killing fossil fuel 110 120 million new cars a year come out with fossil fuels, ice machines, internal combustion engines. Only like 3 million, look it up, last time I read, and that's an evolving number. Let's call it 5 million EVs out of 110 million cars, vehicles. So that demand is gonna disappear in the next 10 years because the car makers said they're not going to make any of them. And we're flying less, driving less, commuting less, telecommuting more, zooming more uh and you tell me we're going to need more energy in the future no way i don't buy it they say there's going to be less production of oil i don't buy it the whole uh, middle east has nothing going for it except oil for now they're trying to change that uh there are so many com countries that depend on oil selling they're gonna they're gonna What's going to happen is going to crash. That's what I'm saying It's going to happen. There's going to be so much competition to take market share. And the way OPEC used to fight for market share is by dropping the price to below $55 an, uh, a barrel. I said that oil will be under 60 this year or early next year. Look at it. Uh, so um, it will get there. It will get there. And the oil companies are not a buy. I had a debate yesterday with a good friend in front of my house. And uh, he said, oh, I'm going to buy oil. I'm like, I wouldn't. He goes, why not? He, uh, is it the yield? I said, he says, yes. I said, buy Verizon. Verizon just fell into a, a generational low on a regular uh, earnings. And it now pays almost 5.8%. Exxon doesn't pay you that or Chevron. And um, it just, it's in a, here's Exxon. Check it out. Okay. This is. 
sorry about that. Okay. <clears throat> um, Chevron, Exxon, I'm trying to see three months. They, uh, oil, what, which chart? I can't remember now. Oh, darn it. Oxy. Yes, Oxy. <laughs> Here's Oxy three months chart to show you a long-term period, okay? This is uh, 2018. This is 2014. This is 2013. Whoever bought it here did not look left. This says, oh, I've seen it crash and burn three times before over 20 years, over 10 years, 12 years. Uh, let me try it one more time. What? Okay. So that's the kind of logic we try to avoid. Whether it takes it out eventually or not, when it takes it out, it's going to be an explosive move. But this is a three-month, uh, this is a quarterly chart. So it, it needed to close there on a quarterly basis. This is a monthly chart. So you can see for one, two, three, four, five, six months, it failed miserably. Four months, it failed miserably. Two months, it failed miserably. And now two months, it failed miserably. It can try again. And if it takes this out, maybe it takes these out. But to buy it going into these failures, um, not an obvious entry point. I say that comfortably. So we shorted it and we made money. I will short it until it takes that out. And then I'll say, okay, Warren was right. Now I'll get out. How about another five minutes and <coughs> my throat is going away. Rodrigo. Oh, wait, sorry. I think I was muted there. Um, yeah, so let's get some. Let, if you can hear me there, you good there, Nick? We're good? Um, yeah. Yeah, so let's use these last um, five, ten minutes here to get some closing remarks on your end on the market and why the folks here should join us on the chat room because I know Monday is going to be pretty active on the chat room. Yep. Yeah, um, say it again. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, if you can give closing remarks on why the folks should join okay. the chat room for Monday. Yes. So this week is potentially violent uh, because there is uh, a small event called the Fed um, and uh, a smaller event called. Can somebody get me the value for how much, how many billions of dollars are at stake from earnings reports? Everybody reports this week. Everybody that hasn't reported yet, like Netflix and Tesla, reports this week. Apple, Google, Microsoft, Amazon. I mean, what? Who does that? Can you just, oh my God, it's going to be epic. So the Fed, it doesn't matter how many they cut, 1.5075. What matter is what he says. So I'm going to focus you what I told my guys, which is don't look at the CPI. I don't think the Fed is looking at the CPI as much as wage inflation. So what he was trying to do, he is trying to destroy demand uh, because he cannot control supply. Supply, we have shortages of everything. So everybody's paying up and outbidding each other to buy stuff, right? So that's inflation. And um, so the Fed created that inflation, helped create it by providing a liquidity like nobody before. Um, and now they're trying to undo the beast they unleashed last year uh, when they told us it's transitory by breaking the other side that they were working on last year, which is jobs. So how do you undo demand? You make people unemployed. So in the last three weeks, how many companies have you read about pulling back hiring? Focus on that as a clue for the Fed to change tones, to say, okay, I think I've gotten the job done. Everybody stopped hiring. Everybody. So now people are, can't find a job as fast as they could. And this past week, we started seeing people firing, cutting jobs. So job done, Fed. You're destroyed what you created last year, and you're trying to destroy what you created last year, last year with the inflation. So they can't even do half their job right. They broke your arm last year to fix your leg. This year, they're breaking your leg to fix your arm. I cannot believe this guy is still in, in charge. Uh, so... Um, I think he will probably say something nice about wage inflation. And then Steve Leisman from CNBC will come out and tell you that he just said that. And then everybody will go, oh, wait a minute. 
this a change in tone? So how can you play that? A bet, get long the TLT. The TLT will fall if the Fed stays hawkish and he raises two points. The TLT will rise if he doesn't raise as much as people expect or if he starts to tone down his blah, 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 blah. So the TLT is one way. Uh, short the dollar is another way. Uh, you can buy puts in the UUP. I have them and I'm losing because I decided to take it out two months in time and say, I give myself two months to be wrong or right, and it only cost me 45 cents per contract. So if I did 10, that's $450, and it can make me a lot of money if I'm right or lose $450. So far, I'm losing 220 or whatever on paper, and I have time to be right. So one of those two trades, I wouldn't take both. Uh, long gold might work, might, not as clear cut, but TLT is a direct play on a, ho on a less hawkish Fed. And uh, the markets, I think, will rally either way. They just want a relief rally. Once the event is gone, they're going to go, thank God, get out of here, let's go, regardless of the message. So we'll see. We will trade it actively. I don't think you can set a trade and forget it. And if you do, you should do it like um, a call butterfly that costs two, three hundred dollars and could bring you four or five grand. That's it. All right, that's that's <laughs> enough for me and my throat. I need to go eat and drink something and spend some time with the family. Awkward silence. Are you on mute again? Yeah, was, I was on mute, but yes, um, I'll see you on Monday in the chat room, Nick. And uh, shout out, man. You know, all the work you put in there, chat rooms, love it, man. So we'll see you there tomorrow. Rodrigo, uh, yesterday, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Okay. No all right, folks. So I'm going to show you the chat room right now, as you can Boy, see. I, um, I don't know if I'm showing the chat room. I think I'm showing the chat room. Hold on. All right, there we go. All right, one second. All right, I'm not muted. All right, cool. So um, this is the active live room. So if you are live trading, if you want to scalp either stocks or options, I want you to please look into this particular chat room. I'm going to show you how to get in there. For all you folks that did join, really quick, I do need to give a shout out. Um, day trader options. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family, man. This is a legit family. Trust me, you're going to feel it. So this is the blue chat room. This is really where you want to start off, right? There's two channels in there. I'm going to zoom in here. You have one of them, inner circle chat. The other one is called Nick's important messages. Inner circle chat is basically where everybody, everybody, including Nick, you know, are, you're going over trade ideas, education setups. It's a back and forth. It's the conversational part. And you, you'll have the, this is open 24 seven. The other channel is Nick's important messages. I'm going to click on here really quick and I'm going to show you this is where only Nick can post. So when he's posting here a market commentary, uh, the morning uh, post, which is this one, it's going to have a few links there. Right. Very important to know what they do. The top link is for the live room, which is live trading Monday to Friday. Below, you're going to see the SPY Qs and IWM charted, and you will have the futures uh, as well there in the bottom For because we do have a lot of uh, futures traders. We even have Forex traders. There's a lot of people that join Nick for a lot of reasons, right? So very important link here, the live room. Once you click it, uh, I'm going to exit out of it, and I'm going to get in again so you see how it is. So you click on it, put your name there pop in there in the bottom you're going to see there's a chat you open it this is another live chat room that you have with nick the only difference is that when nick is there you're going to see him sharing his screen talking to people responding verbally it's he's live the whole day monday to friday and then you also have him sundays 10 to 1 but if you are day trading if you are trying to be a little bit more active in the markets and, and that's really your style right that's what you're trying to do that's what you want to do um, join, you know, get into this particular chat room. The other thing is that if you do want to ask Nick a question, all right, um, if you do want to ask Nick, I think that was Ram that just joined. Was that you, Ram? Make sure you mute that stuff there, man. <laughs> um, Shadow One, I'm already in the inner circle just here to learn. 
Uh, Jay Chung, um, I mean, we're really not supposed to do any lifetimes, but, you know, since you already called me out on it, just call me, all right? Again, the only way to get a lifetime is if you call me because we're not even supposed to do that. Um, Jay, but I'll put the contact there. Um, so, uh, Ram, yeah, so basically this is the live room. Ram is already in there. He just joined. He joined earlier today. Super easy. You know, everybody can get in there. It's super fast. Um, Ram, you're all good, man. He's like, yo, it's me. I'm muted. <laughs> all right, brother. No, it's all good. Just, you know, we're, um, all right, let's see. Okay. So if you have a question for Nick, if you have, if, if you're joining for the education, let's say, right, if you're joining because you want to learn certain things about trades, maybe you just need a little bit of sharpening, you know, on your skill sets still, you know, you should still be in this live room because you can ask a question and you get an immediate response. And there's, it's way better to get a response in a video live room showing you charts with the real explanations of this is why this is happening and showing you the levels than to just, you know, go back and forth on a text. So that's really why this live room really has um, a little bit of a premium, I'd say, because you do have that live interaction with an actual instructor, trading partner, any, whatever it is that you need. If you're looking for an instructor, you're not going to find anybody that gives you nine to five and Sundays, you know, like every single week. So if you're looking for a trading partner, no, again, nobody else will, will do this either, right? Where they're trading with you nine to five, going through the charts back and forth. And he does have a bunch of tools that he's going to share you and give you access to, right? So very important, get into this live room because it's live. It's live. I mean, he's there sharing screens. So if you're trying to get education, pop in there. If you're trying to scalp options, scalp uh, stocks, whatever it is, even crypto, like Nick will trade crypto. Um, so I'm going to put the contact info in the chat, but before I do want to, um, thought by nature, funny guy is, but if you guys have any questions, you guys, you know, you can just email me. Keep in mind it's Sunday. I'm literally the only guy that's working here today. Um, so, but I'll still, you know, I think probably email would be the best way, but again, if you sign up live, you get two bonus items. Keep in mind. The 30 day money back guarantee is until midnight. We we will cut off the 30 day money back guarantee after midnight. It's going to go back to seven. So, you know, if you if you saw this on time, lucky you, uh, because this is something we never do. Um, but today, you know, we just wanted to give you guys a little bit something extra special. Right. So. <clears throat> so, right. This is the live room again. Education, live trades pop in there. Uh, the other thing. In the live room here, keep in mind, you can actually set up sound alerts, right? And it's these bells here. So if you click that bell, you see <clears throat> it's like yellow, right? So that means that whenever somebody's posting uh, something in any of those channels, you're going to have a pop sound, right? And if you do want to take them off, that's fine. You could take them off. But I do know a lot of people that, I mean, look, this is simply having a tab open. Just like you have your Gmail open, just like you have a bunch of, you know, nonsense open, in your computer you can have this chat room open this actually makes you money this actually makes you more productive unlike 99 percent of the things that most people do right you know checking instagram or all that stuff like this is actually a tool that will help you make money and this is where you should be focused considering the times we're in right how to make more money even if you're working full-time you still want your money to work for you i talked to a bunch of people here that you know even ceos people that have a full-time job they don't want their money just sitting parking because with inflation, everybody's feeling it now. Everybody's feeling it now. So um, even if you're staying still, you're still sinking at this point. <clears throat> uh, Ram Kishore, my Sunday browsing on YouTube. What is that, Kishore? Sunday browsing on YouTube comes up with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Yeah, man, I mean, I really don't do this. You can ask anybody here at Benzinga. This is really more of like a once-in-a-lifetime once thing, I'll say. Um, yeah, so I'm going to put the contact in there, folks, for you guys to chat. And a big shout-out here, Mary75. Mary's in the house officially. We have a bunch of people here that just joined, so I want to give a big shout-out to you guys. I'll put the contact in there if you guys have questions. Um, let me just go over the last thing here because I went through everything. Um, by the way, you do have a scanner here. I forgot to say this is a scanner. It's proprietary, of course, to Benzinga, like everything else I'm showing you. 
and in the scanner you're not going to find it anywhere else because we built it for the chat members so for the live room of course right and look you can also upload pictures there we, we definitely want you to be uploading trading pictures charts things like that right um that sort of stuff that's the whole point of it um the other thing the education videos uh if you are new again if you were talking about education if you were trying to get you know education out of this keep in mind this is a live trading room so we do have some uh preset videos that will pretty much get you up to speed to where you need to be when it comes to trading options i use these videos when i started trading options a little bit more actively and they were very very important right to the formation of really understanding the risk risk management and all that stuff the analysis of options so uh, i'll go over some of them so that you can kind of get an idea of what i'm talking about <clears throat> so what are options and puts i know that you know this is something that everybody should should look at this 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 particular one especially because there's so much misinformation out there so many gurus out there and it's very easy to fall into that right especially if you're new you don't know better so you know it happens it happened to me it happens to anyone so don't feel bad just feel glad that you came across this stream that we have here so then we have uh, what is a spread right very important spreads are really really important when it comes to options you'll do a lot of these with nick so i suggest that you also take your time with these videos okay pen and paper i really want you to learn this stuff ultimately we're here to help you succeed so when you guys bank on nick's trades and learn and all that stuff you know that's you know mission mission achieved right so that's the goal here um call options right definitions and uses it's very important to know what everything means when it comes to options credit put spreads nick loved nick loves doing these types of trades the credit put spreads then you have when and how to book profits risk management when to book or set a stop loss risk management right nobody talks about risk management and options so here you have you know two amazing videos on that <clears throat> also <clears throat> what type of trade is best it's very important to know what type of trade to do you might think should i buy a call should i buy a put or should i sell it or should i do a spread or a butterfly you know or a con iron condor whatever it is so there's so many different types of trades for different situations in this video you're going to know which type of trade is best for that particular situation this other lesson that we have here is how to pick what type of trade right so you're going to pretty much use both of these videos um very very well right so i want you to look at these videos kind of like a one part two thing because it's definitely going to help you out it helped me out a lot and it's really hard to get this sort of information out there really you know from from any trusted source i'd say right um so <clears throat> so <clears throat> damn i'm losing my voice here too um <clears throat> so i'm gonna put the contact in the chat if anybody does want to reach out keep in mind um we, even though we're close today i'm still going to be answering emails and all that stuff the other thing guys is that we are going to be live trading tomorrow so make sure that if you join you're there very early in the morning i'm talking about 8 8 30 a.m eastern that's when the live room opens that's when that nick is there posting the charts talking with the members doing all that stuff and you're also going to get two bonus items if you join tonight courtesy of rodrigo as well I'll put the contact if you want to reach out. Thanks for joining here, guys. I hope you have a great weekend. Stay safe. And we're going to see you guys in the chat room on Monday.